Hi, welcome to this video. This is a 5.5 gallon aquarium that I am planning to put a freshwater fish in. It is important for any fish to first cycle an aquarium before getting them. Really hardy fish may be okay without a cycled tank. In fact, they are used for doing the fish cycle method where you cycle your tank using really hardy fish. It is better though to do the fishless cycle method, which is what I will be doing. I will be using ammonia and bacteria that comes in a bottle. There are natural ways of cycling a fish tank without fish, but that can take a long time and you would have to get some real decaying matter like dead shrimp or something, something that will actually produce enough ammonia. So today I will be using some ammonium chloride and nitrifying bacteria to cycle my tank and I'm using the brand Dr. Tim's Aquatics, which can be found on Amazon.com, which is where I got these. This video is not sponsored by the way. I just wanted to try out this brand because it was easy to get and I am going to be following Dr. Tim's instructions online for using these. If you don't know what cycling is, I will put on the screen a summary and why it's important and you can pause and read that if you'd like. But now I'm going to get started with cycling this fish tank. This whole demonstration will work for any sized aquarium. You will just have to change the numbers according to the size of your tank. So before we get started, I have my fish tank all set up and ready for water. It is important that you have all of the decorations, including the filter and heater in there, for the cycling process. You need some sort of substrate on the bottom of the tank. Bare bottom tanks do not provide enough surface area for the bacteria. So just make sure there's something on the bottom of the tank that the bacteria can grow on. For this tank, I am not using the typical gravel or sand. I'm using plastic grass mats. You do want to keep all the parts of your filter in your filter. This includes the sponge or filter pad, activated carbon, and whatever else. You're going to want to have your filter running and your heater turned on and you can leave the light off. The reason the heater should be on is because warm water will cycle faster. So I am ready to add water, but first I need to test my water to see where the pH is at. Water with a low pH under 7 is soft water, and soft water will take longer to cycle because the bacteria do not grow fast in these conditions. I am planning on having a bed of fish in this tank. You're going to want to look up what pH the fish you will be getting prefers. Bed of fish prefer a pH between 6.8 and 7.5. I noticed after testing my water that the pH is well above 7, so after I'm done cycling this tank, I will need to soften the water for the bed of fish, which I will do so by adding Indian almond leaves to the water. That is one way I can lower the pH naturally, but for cycling, I'm going to leave it a high pH so that the beneficial bacteria will grow faster. So knowing that my water is a good pH for cycling, I can now add the water to my aquarium and start the cycling process. So what I will be using is Dr. Tim's Aquatics one and only nitrifying bacteria along with the ammonium chloride solution. I also got Dr. Tim's first defense for conditioning my water to get rid of chlorine and chloramines that is found in tap water. My water comes from a well, but I'm still going to add this first defense to make sure that it's safe. It's important to wait for at least 30 minutes after adding your water conditioner, or in this case, this first defense, so that it doesn't harm the live bacteria when we add that. It's been 30 minutes. I'm going to be adding the ammonia first. This bottle says to use four drops per gallon, but when fishless cycling, you have to reduce the calculated water volume by 20% to account for water displaced by substrate and decorations. So, for example, if you have a 5.5 gallon, you subtract 20%, and so we figure that the water volume is 4.4 gallons. So then, 4.4 gallons times 4 drops equals 17.6 drops total, but I'll round that down to 17 instead of 18 since we don't want to be adding too much ammonia, even though I'm sure one extra drop wouldn't hurt. So, 
I will add 17 drops of ammonia and then I'll look at the time because after 24 hours, I'm going to test the water. Now, after adding the ammonia, I will add the nitrifying bacteria. Apparently, you can't add too much bacteria, so I could dump the whole bottle in here, but I am actually going to measure it for the size of my aquarium because I might want to use the rest of this in a future tank. So that is day one, and I will be back when it's been 24 hours. So there is a system or guideline to follow for cycling the tank, but your own test results determine what you should or shouldn't do, and because it all depends on your own testing results according to the conditions of your tank, your tank could cycle faster or slower than mine does, so do not expect to do what I do and get the same results. You just need to understand the system. The system is test every day and keep a count of the test results. If the ammonia reads above 1 ppm, you do not add more ammonia. You just keep testing every day until it reads below 1 ppm, and that's when you add another 4 drops per gallon of ammonia. And then test every day until it reads below 1 ppm again, and add another 4 drops per gallon. If on any of the testing days, the ammonia and nitrate reads below 0.5 ppm, then it is close to being cycled. And then just continue to test every day until the test reads below 0.2 ppm and add 4 drops per gallon of ammonia. Then again, keep testing every day until it again reads below 0.2 and add 4 drops per gallon of ammonia. And if the day after adding ammonia, the test still reads 0.2, then your tank is cycled. Basically, you want it to get to the point where the ammonia and nitrite in the tank are basically at zero and stay at zero after ammonia is recently added, because that means the beneficial bacteria is established enough to convert the toxic ammonia and nitrate into nitrate at a fast enough rate. And that's the system, at least I think it is, <laughs> according to Dr. Tim's instructions. So now let's see how my testing goes and how long it will take for my tank to cycle. So this is day two, it's been 24 hours since I added ammonia and bacteria to the water. Today all I'm going to do is test the ammonia and nitrate and pH to see where we're at and record that. And that's all we're gonna do on day two. So now this is day three, 24 hours later, and we are going to test the ammonia and nitrite again. If they are below one ppm, I will add 17 more drops of ammonia or four drops per gallon. If the ammonia and nitrate are above one ppm, then we would wait another day and test again and not add more ammonia until it's below one ppm. Here's day four, and this is where I messed up. I tested ammonia, nitrite, and pH again, and I went ahead and tested the nitrate to see if the tank had any, and it didn't, and I mistakenly read the ammonia as below 1 ppm when it in fact was not, but just because it seemed a lighter green than the day before, I assumed it was, so then I went ahead and added another 17 drops of ammonia, and I should not have done that because for the next five days, the ammonia read very high and was not going down at all. So on day 9, I thought maybe adding some more bacteria would help. Next couple days, I noticed the green was not getting any lighter. So then on day 11, I did a 25% water change to get some ammonia out. Next three days, the test results were still all the same. So the next three days, I didn't even bother testing till on day 18 when I did and the results were still the same. And then another seven days on day 25, I finally tested again, and I noticed it was taking longer for the ammonia to turn green, so while I was waiting for the full color to show, I went ahead and tested the nitrate too, and finally, the ammonia was well under 1 ppm, I would say it was 0.25, and the nitrate was no longer yellow, it was in the red. So this meant my tank was 
very close to being cycled. I went ahead and finally added another dose of 17 drops of ammonia and waited a few days. And then on day 28, the ammonia finally read zero. It was in the yellow and the nitrate was still in the high red and the nitrite just never seemed to work. I feel like I once heard a while back that the nitrite test can easily be inaccurate or just not work. That seemed to be the case for me because it never turned purple. But the ammonia must be converting to nitrite at some point for the nitrite to then be able to turn into nitrate. But anyway, I went ahead and added another 17 drops of ammonia on day 28. And then the very next day on day 29, I tested and got the same results, which meant my tank was officially cycled. I am not quite ready to get a fish yet, so... In the meantime, I will continue to test the water and add ammonia every few days so that the beneficial bacteria will stay alive and working, which the ammonia will help do. So until I get a fish to be my ammonia for this tank, I will add my own pure ammonia from the bottle. I'm just assuming this is what I should do while I wait to get a fish. I hope that if you cycle your tank that it doesn't take as long as it did for me and that you will learn from my mistake and not add more ammonia until it's definitely a lime green color. And in the end, you want the pH to be at a good level for the kind of fish you have and the ammonia to be at zero, the nitrite to be at zero, and the nitrate to be a high number. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, remember to like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your fish and God bless. Bye!